For this art analysis, I went to the Getty and chose two artworks from two different gallery sections. The first piece I'll be discussing is an oil on canvas artwork created by Claude Monet entitled Impression Sunrise, which was made in 1872. Most sources have this work titled Impression Sunrise, so that's what I'll be referring it to as, despite the Getty labeling it as Sunrise. As stated on Art in Context, this work is an Impressionist piece and was actually one of the first paintings to be coined as such. It was included in an exhibition from a group of artists that called themselves Cooperative and Anonymous Association of Painted, Sculptures, and Engravers. A critique of this exhibit exhibition called it the exhibition of the impressionists thus coining the term that would be used to describe this style of painting done by monet and others this style of painting done by monet is an en plan air style meaning in the open air in french this technique is also associated with a more open usage of brush strokes and paint this style is one done by many impressionists and thought to be revolutionary for the impressionist movement this work is meant to leave an impression of Le Havre Harbor, as shown by Monet during sunrise. The brush strokes are part of the line work of the piece, seemingly almost unfinished as the background is less clear than the foreground. There's a clear differentiation between the boats in the foreground and how they gradually get lighter in the shade in shade and less exact. Most of the background elements, such as the chimneys and construction, seem unfinished as the brush strokes are obvious. The sun is one piece that is clearly defined in the background with a vibrant orange-red color. Since the brush strokes are easily spotted, it may seem rushed, like Monet didn't spend the time to blend in the colors to have a complete image. This, however, was the point, to be a quick impression of the scene, thus the title. The small details of the water waves become more and more similar to brush strokes. The sun stands out in this painting as it stands alone as the brightest color used in the palette. This allows the painting to become atmospheric and represent a fleeting moment that may never been that may never have been witnessed unless passing by this exact spot at this exact time. This painting allows for the viewer to easily spot the first peak of the sun on the water as it rises above the harbor. This quick glance allows the viewer to notice the smaller but final finer details of morning such as the earlier mentioned sunrise appearance of those going about their morning task. The second artwork that I chose to analyze is titled Justice and Divine Vengeance, Pursuing Crime by French artist Pierre-Paul Proudhon in 1805. The medium is oil on canvas. This work is similar to the first in that it has a striking appearance of the moon as the impression sunrise had of the sun. This piece depicts divine vengeance and justice, chasing after a criminal fleeing from a murdered victim with their belongings. This piece, made by Proudhon, was to hang in the criminal courts of the Palace of Justice in Paris. It's said that this piece is inspired by the quote, Retribution rarely fall fails to pursue the evil man, written by the Roman poet Horace. Proudhon uses quick and long brushstrokes, which adds to the drama and movement of the two figures flying across the sky. The moon spotlights divine justice, or sorry, divine vengeance and justice as they chase after the criminal who is in darkness. It also shines a light on the victim, emphasizing the shadow placed over the criminal. Proudhon shows the two figures as angels avenging the victim relentlessly following after the criminal. This painting is extremely telling of the world in 1805 focused on vengeance and obtaining justice. As this painting was meant to be in a place of politics, it only makes sense that divine vengeance is merely holding a torch to light the way, as, and justice is who will do the deed of weighing what will happen to the criminal as they hold a sword and scales with them. The criminal seems, sorry, the victim seems angelic, wreathed in light from the moon as blood drips off their torso. Red is another main color in this piece, as justice is swathed in the color. It's almost as if they are soaked in the blood of the victims that they have obtained justice for. Divine vengeance is draped in blue, which was often used to express sorrow or grief. Vengeance takes the role of a witness or advocate for the victim, while justice is the judge. Both of these pieces use an object not man-made, but planetary, 
to shine a light quite literally on the aspects most important to them. In the case of Monet, the sun rising allows him to portray a world not easily seen by a world still asleep if you're not of the working class. Which is true to the present day. After all, how many of us can say, we still see the sunrise? Not many. In Prudhon's work, the moon is spotlighting divine vengeance, justice, and the victim. In today's society, so much focus is on the criminal, while the victim is left in the shadows. This work could bring us back to what obtaining, obtaining vengeance and justice was originally for, the victim. We are told not to take vengeance into our own hands and trust our criminal justice system to do its job. As the painting suggests, this may take time, but that justice is relentless and will eventually reach its mark. Whether or not I necessarily believe that is a different story.